All righty. Welcome back to the Define Gravity Podcast with Zach Goodman. I am going to talk about the brief maximal tension method. That is probably um, one of the most requested things that that I get all the time to talk about um, on Twitter, on Instagram, on any social media um, about what the brief maximal tension method is and how I'm using it with my athletes. Okay. Um, And so in this episode, we're going to talk about what is the brief maximal tension method. And we are going to kind of start this brief maximal tension series off. So I'm going to record um, probably a series of episodes specifically on this method. I use my athletes to develop strength. Okay. And rate of force development. So um, this can be kind of seen as our first entry into that series. Okay. Um, So without further ado, let's get rolling. So what is the brief maximal tension method? I found a quote uh, from super training and it is um, going to describe exactly what this method does for us. Okay. So the brief maximal tension method develops the ability to concentrate neuromuscular effort, leading to greater force development and rate of rate of force development over the traditional progressive resistance method, okay? This method increases strength without muscle mass, which is important for sports, which require primarily relative strength development, okay? Lifting maximal or near maximal loads enhances the ability to accelerate heavy loads and increase special work capacity as expressed by the skill to express concentrated power, okay? So to sum that up, essentially it's it's a method designed to improve neuromuscular outputs through developed motor unit recruitment at optimal discharge frequencies. Okay. So that is what this method is going to do for us. It is going to allow us to develop absolute strength. Okay. It is going to develop um, rate of force development as relative strength um, rapidly increases using this method. Okay. Um, And so it's primarily going to do this through two different ways. It's going to do this through maximal motor unit recruitment through achieving maximal muscular tension also going to do this through optimal discharge frequency, which as we will see is how you get the strength to transfer to explosive outputs. Okay. You have to train the nervous system to fire in a synchronized action. Okay. So this is how we're going to get the weight room to transfer. Okay. Um, so this first other methods, okay. This method could be seen because it is, um, as we'll talk about, is going to be multiple repetitions. It is not a single. Okay. So this can be seen in between max effort and repetition effort, okay? So it is this hybrid method in between both, okay? It is technically a sub-method of max effort because you are getting max effort adaptations, okay, but from multiple reps, okay? All this essentially does, that it all leads to strain, right? We know the repetition effort is going to lead to a strain because you're reaching muscular failure. You're also going to realize that if you're using max effort, you know, the whole reason we use max effort is to strain to achieve that maximal muscular tension, Okay. Um, and so it's all going to lead to a strain, which is going to help us recruit maximal motor units. Okay. But because this um, brief maximal tension method is naturally lower reps, it is going to allow us to have optimal discharge frequencies. Okay. And so these optimal discharge frequencies are going to be um, had because we are using low reps. Okay. So the intensities are going to have to be high enough to allow us to achieve maximal tension in a short period of time. Okay, so if we're using triples, for example, um, it's a low enough rep scheme that if we want to achieve maximum muscular tension, we want to achieve a strain at triples, you're going to have to use something like probably 88 to 92%, probably more if you're young. Okay, <clears throat> so um, these are going to allow us to achieve maximum muscular tension in a really fast rate, okay, because the reps are naturally low, we're going to achieve tension really, really quickly. Okay, which means that we are going to create a synchronized firing pattern of the nervous system. Okay, so the nervous system is allow us to fire rapidly because it has to. So if we use a three rep max, for example, and we take a triple, the nervous system has to recruit and achieve maximal muscular tension extremely fast because we are reaching, um, again, we're recruiting so many motor units and fatiguing those so quickly. Okay, so this this essential tension is just going to come really, really quickly. Okay, whereas if you take a ten, set of 10, if you get a 10 rep max, Okay, that tension is going to be drawn out because those first five or six reps are not really going to be achieving much tension. They're going to be fatiguing you, um, but it's going to take those, it's those last few reps, right? Like if you're into bodybuilding and things like that, those last few reps, that kind of that grind, that strain is kind of where you're going to achieve that muscular failure. Okay, the brief maximal tension method is going to allow us to achieve muscular tension much faster, which is necessary for getting this stuff to transfer to the jumping and the spring, like I said before. Okay, so naturally it's going to be a faster route to muscular tension. 
Okay. Um, percent of tension range. This is a question I get a lot for the brief maximum tension method is what percentages are we using? Um, I don't use any percentages at all. Okay. And I'll talk about that as we begin to talk with the brief max tension method and how I wave it. And uh, I'll pull up some kids programming um, one of these episodes and I'll, I'll go through it and I'll show you guys what I'm doing and how we're just kind of progressing these kids in a pretty simple fashion. Um, but it works extremely effective. Um, but a percentage, if you had to put a percentage tag on it, it would be somewhere between 85 to 95% of a true one rep max, a true one max. So that's, that's not, oh, we tested a six or, or we tested a one rep max six weeks ago. This is a true right now day to day one rep max. So this is, if I have 400, that's all I can do for the day. That's my true one rep max. That is the percentage of the speed we're working in, which is why VBT works so good because it actually uses, allows us to hit a speed rather than a percentage. Okay. So it's a much more accurate and kind of, you know, perception of effort and an actual daily readiness and things like that. But aside from that, Again, this would be an actual real percentage, 85 to 95%. Okay. Um, rep ranges go. As far as rep ranges go, they're going to be three to five. So threes, fours, and fives is our bread and butter. Okay. So if you have to look at the brief maximum tension method, it would be threes, fours, and fives at 85 to 95%. As I begin to show you my own athletes training, we work well over 95%. Okay. Um, we are, again, progressing at a rate that is more than 100% most of our sessions. But again, it's 85 to 95% of a true one max, a daily one rep max, rather than a um, 85 to 95% of a previous one rep max. Because again, our athletes are growing and getting so much stronger so fast. Okay, there's no way you could use percentages to do this. You would have to be able to do it the way that I do it or um, the way that some other people do it. But you'd have to do it my way, essentially, because you would not be able to use percentages or would not be accurate, or you could use VBT. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do it. Um, Obviously, I'm going to show you guys my way to do it, um, but this is essentially why you would not be able to use percentages because the kids get strong so fast. You can't use percentages because kids get too strong too fast. Percentages will leave them behind, okay? Um, so, other thing, okay? On this first other message, it has to be to neural failure to be considered brief maximal tension, okay? So, in my notes here, I have, um, we most often are, oh, this is why I fall short to repeated effort because the intensity are too high. Okay. Um, so I kind of already talked about, it has to be a neural failure rather than muscular failure. Okay. So in a, you know, 10 rep max, you're going to reach muscular failure. Okay. And there is going to be neural failure going on as well, but in something like a one rep max, you're not achieving muscular failure. You're achieving neural failure. You're achieving the amount of force those muscles can produce. You're not fatiguing the muscles, right? You just can't recruit enough motor units to complete that task. Okay, so this is going to be neurological training. This is going to be the manipulation of the nervous system. This is not going to be for hypertrophy, um, as it will have some trace hypertrophy benefits, but is primarily going to be to manipulate the nervous system to recruit and fire motor units faster, produce force faster. Okay, so who is brief maximal tension used for? Okay, so a few things on my notes that I wanted to uh, talk about. Firstly, young or untrained nervous systems who cannot recruit maximum motor units in action in single maximal bouts and single high velocity bouts. Okay. So in the West Side Barbell system, okay, it's primarily again, I talk about conjugate. That's what I use. Okay, I'm a conjugate coach. I consider myself to use a conjugate system. Um, in the West Side Barbell conjugate system, we have these max effort days with these dynamic effort days, right? Okay. For a untrained, immature nervous system. Okay, they're not going to be able to get the most benefit out of a max effort single, primarily because they cannot recruit enough motor units in action to fatigue these motor units in a single bout. Right, you need multiple bouts to fatigue them, which is why we see um, why some why some people generally tend to move towards higher rep ranges for younger athletes. Right, they start to see this kind of pattern happening. Like, oh. They, you know, they can't strain, right? It's this learnability, this ability to fire motor use in a synchronized action, okay? That's the whole straining, this learned ability of straining is just firing of motor units in a sequential or a synchronized action, okay? Whereas if you're doing something long and drawn out, like a 10 rep max, that is going to be sequential firing of motor units, right? Those first four or five reps aren't really doing much until those last couple, right? But when you're using brief maximum tension or max effort, you are getting boom. You're getting motor units recruitment super, super fast, okay? Um, so the brief maximal tension method is going to allow us to fatigue and uh, recruit and fatigue motor units in untrained athletes. So athletes that have an immature nervous system, okay, that cannot use singles because they cannot recruit all motor units in a single bout, okay? 
because we have to recruit, we have to fatigue. Okay. Um, other thing. Okay, we have these three methods of maximalist retention I've talked about, right? We have this max effort method, this repeated effort. We have the dynamic effort method, right? The dynamic effort method, you can achieve maximal muscle retention, right? It's a method of maximal muscle retention, but you're achieving it through velocities of high velocity specifically, okay, rather than slower velocity, whereas max effort is going to be the slowest thing we get to achieve maximal tension. Dynamic effort is going to be the fastest thing we get to achieve maximal tension, okay? Um, so... In an untrained nervous system, they are going to have a hard time recruiting maximal motor units at high velocities, right? This is why we see rate of force development increase so rapidly with maximal strength because young, immature athletes, right? Athletes that have an immature, untrained nervous system, they are not able to recruit things fast enough because they don't have access to enough, simply, okay? So we see that as maximal strength rises, especially in the untrained nervous system, rate of force development rises really, really fast, Okay. Um, so this is going to be extremely important going forward is to understand that we need to give our athletes access to more, okay, access to more force and continue to refine that force over time at higher velocities. Okay, the brief maximum tension method is going to allow us to do both, right, because we are increasing that amount of force, the access to that force, while simultaneously increasing rate of force development. Okay, so the brief maximum tension method allows us to do both. Okay, because we're getting so much force so quickly because we're using such low reps. Okay, along with we are recruiting all these fibers, okay, and we are um, fatiguing them. This is going to allow us to do both things at once. Okay, it's the same reason why max effort, I've heard this before, and I think this is really smart. Okay, this is high level thinking um, to me is that max effort is also speed work. Okay, sit on that. Max effort is also speed work. Why is max effort speed work? How could max effort, the slowest thing we do, also be speed work, right? I've heard Louis Simmons say for max effort, speed work, okay? It's because max effort allows us to gain more access to force, right? It allows us to have a greater amount of motor use to pull on during work, during an effort, during some sort of output, right? So max effort is going to increase our neurological ability to access more motor use to create more force. So it's basically increasing our access to force, Okay. As we get stronger, we have more access, which means even if our percentage of using those motor units is still, say we can only, you know, say we say we can only pr um, produce and display 70% of our maximal um, output at a specific high velocity, if we're incre increasing that abundance of force, okay, through absolute strength, then we're still going to produce more in a, um, in a thing, in a bout at a high speed, regardless if we actually increase that 70%, right? So you can increase, technically, you can increase force production, right, through means of rate of force development, sharpening, or means of increasing absolute strength. But in the untrained nervous system, you actually get both, okay? So in the untrained nervous system, if you increase absolute strength, you actually get both. Um, and you actually can get both as well with the dynamic effort method. I know that uh, one of my good friends, Brandon Bird, used the dynamic effort method a lot with his younger athletes um, because he's just fine-tuning rate of force development before he kind of gives them access to absolute strength. Um, a lot of his early athletes do a lot of like a dynamic effort type of wave twice, and then he starts to roll them into max effort, which is fine. Um, I just prefer this approach of just starting off with straining and teaching the strain because my, my thought process is, um, this is something that I see time and time again, athletes cannot reach over 10 meters per second in the sprint because they can never touch below 0.3 meters per second in a squat. Okay. So you have to be able to work slow enough to work fast enough. You have to have enough access, enough ability to call upon, um, motor units in a neuromuscular fashion at a really slow rate before we can ever do it at a really fast rate. So you have to give yourself access, okay? So athletes have a really hard time reaching really high velocities because they can never really touch slow velocity. They can't, they don't know how to strain, so they can't really touch high velocities, okay? So that's my thought process on that. Um, so uh, next, use primarily for middle school, high school athletes and college athletes that I have, okay? So I use this primarily with all of my athletes, um, again, because athletes do not train 12 months a year. And if they do, their training getting cut into by things like practice and games and things like that, which is again, why you could never get too strong in four years, but that's another episode. It's no such thing as strong enough. No such thing. Um, but my middle school, high school and college athletes all use this method. So this method is age appropriate. Okay. So it's meant for, um, athletes that don't have a clearly defined advanced nervous system. And that's truly not going to happen in the first at least for the first five or six years of training, you're not going to really truly um, have an advanced defined nervous system within five years of training. It's going to take longer than that. Okay. It does, it does take time. 
which is why we don't see a lot of people pull 800 in their first five years of training. It takes 10 years, 20 years, right? Um, so it takes time to sharpen the nervous system's ability to produce force, okay? Um, so if you were wondering who you could use this with, I use this literally with everybody. So if you had sixth graders come in, I have sixth graders who use brief maximum tension method. If I had a third grader come in, I'd have a third grader use the brief maximum. I would literally give every single kid the brief maximum tension method, okay? Other reason you choose this, you don't choose the repeated effort method because you are going to ruin optimal discharge frequencies, okay? So this is why you choose this method as well, is that if you are giving your athletes, say we're using sixes and eights and tens and all these high reps, right? The one by 20 system, my God, make me puke, okay? Seeing these one by 20 systems, you are ruining optimal discharge frequency, you're ruining the athlete's ability to call upon for to create force in a rapid fashion. That's all you're doing. Okay. So when we have these long and drawn out sets, right, we're hitting, you know, 20 reps on the bench press, you are teaching the nervous system to fire very slowly. Okay. Whereas if we want to increase the ability to produce force very quickly, you have to use lower rep ranges because you are going to give an input. You're all, all training is, is a message. Training is just a message for the nervous system, right? So what we're doing is we are giving a message to the nervous system that I need to be able to recruit and fire extremely fast because this barbell is coming at me. It is heavy. We have to call upon more units to move this freaking barbell, right? Instead of me messing around with a freaking 30% of my one rep max for sets of 20, that ain't doing nothing, okay? Which is why you're not building really strong athletes and another topic for another time. Um, but again, you are giving an input to the, you are sending a message to the nervous system. You're sending a message to it. You are telling the body, you're telling the nervous system, you need to recruit faster. That's what you're doing with the brief maximum tension method, okay? So why make the switch, okay? This is my last thing. Why make the switch? I have a bunch of reasons, okay? Firstly, it's going to yield the same benefits that advanced athletes get from the max effort method. It's going to use those same yield those same benefits for an untrained nervous system, right? So you are getting the same effects. You're getting the same adaptations as max effort because you're increasing absolute strength. You're increasing your access to force, Right? But it's better for young athletes because, again, we know that young athletes have a hard time straining. They have a hard time reaching maximum motor unit recruitment in single bouts. They need multiple bouts to recruit all those motor units and fatigue those um, those fibers. We need to be able to fatigue them so they can grow and develop more. Okay. Um, so second thing, increased tonnage and strain. So, again, because we're using a, a little bit more reps, we're using multiple bouts instead of a single, right? You are going to increase tonnage. You're going to increase the amount of volume that your athletes get in a session, which is going to do a few things. It's not only going to increase – um, again, absolute strength, you are going to increase work capacity because now your athletes are handling more tonnage in a um, designated time frame. Okay. So you're going to increase, um, you're going to actually increase uh, work capacity. Okay. Um, and increase straining because you're straining multiple reps. So I think we'll talk about when we talk about brief maximal tension. Brief maximal tension is multiple strains within a set. Okay. It's not just one max effort strain, it is multiple strains in a set. Brief maximal, let me say this again. Brief maximal tension is multiple strains in a set, okay? So you're going to get increased tonnage, and you're also going to get increased ability to strain, okay? Secondly, develops greater ability to strain and achieve maximal and slow speeds, but not achieve in maximal bouts, okay? So something I've already talked about, you're going to be able to achieve maximal straining in uh, that you can't achieve in a single bout because your nervous system is not advanced enough, Okay. Next thing, doesn't add muscle mass like the repeated effort method. So you'd want to use this method because it doesn't add muscle mass. Okay, we know that relative strength is king. Okay, Newton's second law of motion states it is force relative to mass. So if you want to accelerate a mass, you have to develop force. Okay, but it's not good enough just to develop a lot of force. You have to develop a lot of force relative to that mass. Right, so if I have a, if I have a heavy sled... Right, I have to produce enough force to accelerate that sled against the resistance of gravity. Okay, so how you're going to do that is it is force relative to mass. If I need to sprint, I need to produce a ton of force relative to my body mass. Okay, which is why we see um, athletes who are lighter run faster. It's just because they're producing more force relative to their mass. Right, it doesn't take as much force for them to accelerate their mass because they're lighter. Whereas if you see a really heavy athlete right? They're not going to run as fast because they have to accelerate more mass. So it takes more force. But again, look at the NFL combine. I'm recording this today. Um, it'll get posted um, during the NFL combine. Okay. Look at the NFL combine. I saw a 366 pound athlete run a 5'2", 40 yard dash. Absolutely spectacular. Okay. That athlete is extremely strong relative to body weight, but not as strong relative to body weight as the guy that just ran a 4'2", 9". Okay. 
Um, as a defensive back straight at four two nine, so I saw that. Um, so it is a relative strength game. Okay, it is a relative does not mean relative squat game. It means relative strength game. So we still have to train below the knee, which we'll talk about as well. Okay. Again, I'm never going to leave you guys hanging. I'll give you this podcast is meant to share information. It's meant to give you guys exactly what you're looking for, which is why I try to break these episodes up and make them relatively short. So if you had an you know, interest in a topic, you could just click on it and listen to me talk about a topic. Um, so it's meant to be convenient for you guys. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. So it doesn't add mass. Okay. We don't want, we don't want mass added to us. We don't want contractile tissue added to us. Um, that is not going to improve our athletic performance because obviously jumping and spurning is what you get paid the big bucks for. That's what really wins things, right? Um, we want big, fast, strong. Okay, but we need we need to be strong to be fast, and you know can't worry about size until we're fast. Okay, so you don't want mass that cannot contract at high rates because then you'll be big and slow. Okay, which is why bodybuilders they train in a fashion that destroys discharge frequencies. Because they train slow and they train in high rep ranges, so it destroys their discharge frequencies. And despite them being really strong and despite them, you know, having a ton of mass, they can't move very fast because their nervous system doesn't know how to fire fast. Okay. Next one, easy to recover from. Okay. The brief maximal tension method is easy to recover from. Okay. If you're working with untrained athletes or young athletes, they can recover from everything. But the brief maximal tension method is easy to recover from from a muscular and soft tissue standpoint, right? It doesn't beat you down. It doesn't leave you sore which means you can increase frequency, okay? When something is easy to recover from, it means we can do it more frequently, okay? Frequency is the name of the game when you are trying to give inputs to the nervous system, okay? Every single day, every single thing you do is an input to the nervous system, right? So if we can do something more often, if we can do it more frequently, we're going to have more input to the nervous system, which means we're going to have more change, okay? Which is all people looking for. We're looking to change and manipulate the nervous system, Okay. Um, so increased frequency, you're not going to leave your athletes beaten down. You're not going to leave your athletes sore. I use brief maximal tension year round with my athletes. The only time I'm not using brief maximal tension is on game days where I'll give them dynamic effort. Okay. Um, but we're using brief maximal tension method with all my kids. Okay. Um, I use brief maximal tension with my wrestlers that are, you know, wrestling for state titles right now as we speak. Okay. Um, so we are using brief maximal tension all the time. Okay. Um, safe. Okay. Next thing it's safe. Okay. Um, especially if you're at a high school, high school level. Um, if you're a high school strength coach, you know how um, stressful it can be to train high school athletes and middle school athletes. Okay. You also can know that um, parents and things like that don't understand any of this. And so it can be difficult sometimes to explain to them, you know, why their kids are lifting heavy or maxing out or whatever, right? There's so many different, um, you know, myths and things like that about training. But it is safe. It is a safe method. Um, it is aggressive. I will say that it's an aggressive method, but it is safe. Okay. Um, I've never broken a kid using this. Okay? I've used it for a lot of kids for a long time. So um, if anybody's pushed the boundaries on this, it's probably been me. Okay. Um, other people that use the brief maximum tension method don't use it as aggressively as me. Um, they use it in a different fashion than me. But again, I use it in a very, a very, very aggressive way. As you'll see when you see my waving of my athletes, we use it very aggressively, but we also get kids really strong, really fast. Um, so that's the trade-off. But I've never had a kid hurt. I've never had anybody, you know, be broken from this. If anything, our injury rates have went down and kids are much more adaptable and much more resilient because they use a method like this. Okay. And my last one, easy progression. Okay. Brief maximal tension progression becomes really easy once you figure it out. We'll talk about the four ways that I progress uh, my kids' brief maximal tension. Okay, there's four ways. Okay, but we'll talk about those in a different episode um, when it comes to brief maximal tension. Okay, but it's easy progression. It makes for an easy system and kids understand it. And ultimately, if kids can conceptualize and they can understand exactly what you're trying to get them to do, they will do it. Okay, so my athletes are not confused about what we're doing. They know what we're doing. And so they pick up on it and they learn. And we're talking about kids that are 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. Okay. If they can learn the system and they can figure out how to progress and they can kind of work with me on those types of things, then anybody can do it. Okay. So it's an easy progression system. Okay. And again, the brief maximum tension method is not a system. Brief maximum tension method is a method, right? But I built, the, I built an entire strength system using just this method. Okay. And combining it with other methods, which makes my system conjugate, but I have designed a brief maximal tension wave system Okay, that I'll talk about and I'll share different things and things like that. Um, but again, I built I've I've built some really strong kids and I've had a lot of success using this method. Um, and I know some other people that have had a lot of success and have built some really, really strong kids, explosive kids as well using this method. 
Um, so again, it is a proven method and it's very easy to progress and, you know, long-term, um, the only thing that really slows kids down is stopping training. Okay. And you'll know if, if you're a high school strength coach, you'll know that in general, that the biggest problem that you'll run into is having kids stop train or they will be, you know, be inconsistent with effort, right? They might not always push as hard, especially during the end season and things like that. Um, that's the thing that mostly holds kids back. It's not necessarily the actual training system. It's the effort and the attendance and things like that. Okay. Um, but that is kind of our intro to what is the brief max touch method. Hopefully I was, um, good at explaining this stuff. Um, hopefully I did a good job and I was hopefully kept this relatively simple. Um, I know I get off on tangents quite a bit, um, but I tried to make this like digestible for people to listen. Um, and we're going to continue to talk about this because this is a big part of what I do. Um, so I'll continue to make episodes and things like that, just specifically on this method and how to use it. Okay. Um, but hopefully this is a good introduction and you kind of got a little feel of kind of what I do and how this method kind of works. And, um, we're going to talk about how I actually created a system, just this method, right? Because the method alone is simple, but when you, when, when you need to get athletes really strong, simple only works for a small period of time. You have to actually learn how to leverage this, this kind of method within a wave system. And so I'm going to talk about how I use this in a wave system. Okay. Um, but thank you so much. Okay. Um, it's been awesome. I've had a lot of fun recording these episodes. I'm actually recording one late right now to get out to you guys. Um, I didn't record one this week, so I wanted to wanted to sit down and knock one out. Um, and I thought no better time. And I've had four DMS this week alone, but this is something that's been a long time coming, talking about this method, talking about what I do. Um, so yeah, this is just the start. So, you know, stay tuned in. I'm going to continue to share this type of stuff, but um, if you have any questions or anything, um, you can hit me up on Instagram, on Twitter. I know a lot of you are connected with me, you know, text messages, all that type of stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you have any further questions about this, again, I'm going to create more of these episodes. We're going to continue to dive into what this is and how to use it. Um, so hopefully you don't feel lost. Hopefully this is a, a good, solid intro episode. But um, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys later. Thank you.